the verge of graduating high school. Who knows what she could have You know what I'm saying? A doctor that she's looking for. Interesting. I don't know how you do it. But you have got to teach your children to accept rejection with great symptoms. I'm so sorry, in preemption. Just absolutely tragic. Hey man, that's my bad. I'm trying to listen to um I was gonna call it tragic radio, but um obviously the station ain't well. We that's power ninety nine Philadelphia station. I'm out all the way out here in Dover, Delaware, dummy dickhead central. I don't know what this nigga don't even got a radio station out here, bro. Like I hate this town, man. I love her, I love my place, I love where I live, but I hate this town. Anyway, they were talking about um uh, I, th I think it was a 17 year old boy or whatever. I just wanted y'all to catch it. You feel me? Um, he shot and killed a girl because she denied, you know, he was trying to talk to her, trying to get his, get her number or whatever. And, um, he was rejected. So he killed her. Um, I don't, I don't understand what's happening with these situations nowadays because I remember little cats like me when I was coming up, you know, we, we knew, we knew to a certain extent that our game came with some rejection. You feel what I'm saying? Because first of all, we wasn't even trying to be serious with them like that. We was like, yo, come here, B. Yo, yo, B, come here. You know, look, we was just bad little kids. I'm not saying that I condone that type of activity. I'm just letting you know the damn truth, nigga. That's how niggas used to be. Like, yo, what's up? Yo, hollering out the window. You know what I mean? Hey, yo. You feel me? We rarely called him a B afterwards. You wanna know why? Because we called him a B before, beforehand. And usually they'd be like, what you say? And he'd be like, oh man, that's how I talk to everybody, man. Don't take an offense. They're like, yeah, well, I'm, if, if you don't call me a B, I'm, I'm the top B. All right, all right, cool, you top B then. You top B, whatever, you know what I'm saying? You can be whatever B you wanna be, you know what I'm saying? As long as you gonna be around me, right? And then they be going with it, right? That was the days we came from. I don't know what, what's going on with these new girls and these new dudes, but we know we know our times, right? And that shit was flying, calling them certain things even, but bro, it's disrespectful. We know that, but um, these 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 men, that's let's say gotten soft, right? Cause y'all wanted us to be soft. Y'all wanted us to be soft, right? Back in the day, y'all 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 had so many complaints about how niggas used to pull up on y'all and. And just hang out the window and yo, what's up, Ma? Come here, you know what I mean? Let me talk to you. Da, 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 right? Y'all got tired of us doing that, right? That was us. I'll take the responsibility. So why y'all treating them like that? Huh? They can't, they trying to come at your real nigga shit. They trying to be respectable. They ain't hanging out the windows, chatting them out this, that, and the third. They, they, they understand the evolution of the dating process now. So they're trying to make their way a little bit better. They ain't coming like that no more. But now it's the disrespect from the women. I might have to apologize to the young fellas. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know, man. Me, you know, maybe, you know, some of our actions back when we were young, you know, trained these women to be who they are today. And I was just talking to Shorty about this because I was saying all the same bad stuff that I used to do to to say to the girls or whatever back in the day, like the bad stuff, like running around, chasing them, smacking their butts, take their shoe off, take their book bag off, hide their book bag, run with their book bag, you know, you know, real stuff, torture them. And she said, yeah, I hated that. I was going through that too, you know what I mean? And they used to bully me and da 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 Yo, don't y'all know that a lot of girls actually felt bad about that? They really thought we was picking on them, duh. Yo, she really thought this was picking on her. She said she didn't find out until like 10 years later that all the guys that was picking with her liked her. That's 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 the situation, y'all. We 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 made them feel like you know when a man likes them, they got to do all kind of horrible things to him because that's what they were taught when they were young by young boys. They didn't get taught this by their parents or no older people. They've already established this um, mentality, and it, and, it, and it came from, I would say, dealing with, you know, those characters, I, I figure, you know, I'm, I, somebody got to take the blame, right? Somebody got to take the blame, right? Okay, so I'm going to I'm gonna stand up and say, it's our generation, you know what I'm saying, that's going to take the blame, and I don't even know which ones to call y'all, but let's say the 80s babies, 
we, somewhere in there we're gonna have to step up and take that blame because y'all y'all cats do remember when we used to chase these girls down before school and after school and chase them all the way to their house bro you know what i'm saying <laughs> like like cat facts i'm just i'm being honest you know you know a lot of these things is this is why they had to put sexual harassment type stuff in place in school because you're talking about little boys man little boys they see a girl butt or butt they're like oh my god it's a butt <laughs> They want to smack it, pinch it, poke it. Dog, that's little kid stuff. So we're not getting ready to sit here as adults and um and go back reminiscing and blaming adult men for some things that we done did and been through when we was little kids. Because that's really what's going on here, though. But like I said, you know, the Bible does say train the child up the way they should go so that when they get older, they won't depart. That's speaking to the parents. But at the same time, if these kids are going through things, they could be trained up by the world as well. You see what I mean? And if you're not training your little sons, I mean, I, I see they, they stopped doing that. But if they wasn't training their sons, hey, listen, you go to school now. I don't want you messing with them little girls. You don't be smacking them little girls' butts and this, that, and the third. And, you know, nobody told us that. Nobody told us that, bro. Pops didn't tell you that. Uncles damn for sure ain't tell you that. You know what the uncles are saying? Oh, you ain't getting none yet. And I'm like, nigga, I'm like 10. What are you talking about? I didn't get none yet. So I'm out here trying to dry hump joints because I'm forced. I got to get some. Because all my uncles say, oh, you ain't no man. You ain't you ain't getting no girls. You don't get no girls. Every time you see the old head niggas, you like, what shorty? You ain't got no shorty. You get some pussy yet? Why are you asking me do I get some pussy yet? I'm fucking 12, man. Huh? Do y'all understand what we went through? Huh? And who put us through that? The next generation up. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. So we all have a hand in this handing down the next piece of this BS to the next generation, right? So so say we take the blame for the things we did. Now it's the generation underneath of us. You still human beings. You know the right between wrong. Y'all got a lot of things y'all gonna have to take responsibility for. Because you, it, regardless, once you become an adult, you know the difference between right and wrong, right? All right, cool. So now it's the next generation that's getting ready to take the very next responsibility on the mayhem that they're getting ready to bring to the community. Because nobody want to fix it. Everybody want to keep it going, dog. Everybody want to keep it going. So that's why <laughs> if I see cats out here that is of age, like my age or whatever, and they doing to the young boys like we was getting done, and you running around here asking a little 12-year-old, you ain't getting no pussy yet. But you ain't getting no pussy. And you a grown ass man, I'ma punch you right in your shit, dog. You do not talk to little niggas like that. That's not how you do it, bro. You see what I'm saying? That's what was done to us. But come on, bro, that's some strange shit. Why are you trying to force a young man to get involved in adult activities? You know what I'm saying? You know, do you understand what you're doing to him? You talking about, I bet you ain't getting no pussy yet, but you ain't telling this little nigga about no condoms or nothing. You, you feel me? And, I, and I'm just saying, man, I had to deal with that. And a lot of y'all brothers, I know y'all dealt with this. From your, your older cousins, niggas from the block. You know, everybody that tried to make you look like you wasn't nothing because you wasn't doing certain things, man. You understand? So now you out here trying to get some kind of sexual activity going in your life because you out here trying to get some pussy. Because all these niggas done said, you can't do this and you can't do that and you ain't doing this. It makes you feel bad. Versus them saying, you ain't getting straight A's. You ain't doing good in school. You know what I mean? I bet you can't be. I bet you ain't good in basketball. Like, what about those kind of conversations? It's always like, you ain't getting no girls. Oh, yeah, you got a girl. But you only got one. Yeah, when I was your age, I had all the girls. You supposed to have all the girls. You, you sitting there telling little niggas that. That's, that's not the way you tell them. They just thinking, all they thinking is, oh, I got to grow up and get all the girls. That's not what the fuck you supposed to do. You can, but you, that's not what you're supposed to be told. You ain't supposed to be going off the back just believing that life is about that. You're supposed to be training your kids up as a man. The Bible says if you want one wife, two wives, ten wives, it wouldn't matter how many wives you got. If you want a wife, and if you got to take care of the food, shelter, and raiment. So if you got one wife and you out here and you dibbling, dabbling, hey, man, you know what that is. That's fornication. And that's adultery, especially if you're not taking care of 
if you run off the first wife and you ain't taking care of her stuff no more and you run on to the next woman, but you're not continuing to take care of the first wife, food, shelter, and raiment, the Bible said that he committed adultery. You're committing adultery. Not the fact that you have another woman, the fact that you're not continuing to take care of your first wife. It said if he was to marry another woman, if he is to take on another wife, Another wife. That means he already got one. So if he takes on another, God is just saying, all right, I ain't got no problem with you taking on another wife because I made you to have however many you, you can get as a man because you can spread the seed as much. You understand? If you move on to another woman and the last woman you was with, you're not taking care of her situation, they commit adultery. But you're not allowed to leave that woman unless... She has broken the laws of y'all's marriage, which is the conditions of y'all's sexual agreement, a committed sexual agreement between him and her. So basically, if she neglects him in any way, any form, fashion, and and it could it, remember, it says that a woman is bound to her husband as long as he lives. You know, when he dies, she is now released from under the law of her husband. So. It says the law of her husband. What's the what's the law of her husband? We don't know. We don't know her husband. You see, you see what I'm saying? God gave us permission to make up and have our own rules. Not just saying make up shit as you go, because that's what they want to look at it like. And this is why everybody gonna stay single. And then God eventually is gonna bless us with our queens, our real queens. It ain't gonna be nowhere to be found. They'll be servants and peasants for the rest of their life. Because they always wanted to decide to challenge a man. They do not have the power to do what we got to, that we can do on this planet. Like, you got the power to get all this attention and do this and the third. Well, I can have the power to have hundreds of kids if I want to within the next 10 years. Bringing people on this planet that belong to me. Can you do that? Now, if a woman had a, a million wombs or produced a thousand wombs every day, and we only had one sperm that we was able to produce... You know, for nine months, then we got to wait and find that one woman we want to put that sperm into. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <sighs> but after we do that, we ain't going to have no more sperm for nine months. Then I guess what? All you would be doing literally is fornicating after that because, you know what I'm saying? Your body ain't, your body ain't presented for that. But that, that's, the, that's the difference, though. If she had a thousand wounds, if God made a woman with a thousand wounds, then I could see her having multiple men's babies because it's a it's a difference it's a thousand wombs now one womb can have several babies but that was going to come from one genetic strain one from the man right but if she had several wombs then she then i would assume biologically that's saying that she could have several men so say she had three wombs if every woman had three wombs you know what that means that means they are capable of having three men in their lives where they could produce kids for every last one of them and they can make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the baby, one baby on this side for this nigga and one baby in the front for that nigga. But you, you know what a woman gonna say? I don't wanna carry around all them babies. Well, you about to get no man, nigga. We gotta make people out here. Did you not know we was in a human biological, human processing making factory? And y'all sitting around here just trying to be horse, using your body up for everything else besides presenting the world what it actually need? I had to drop the cam. I don't know if that was a cop or not, but no, it's not. But yeah, you, you ain't going to provide the world with what it actually needs, which is more uh, reputable people, more um, respectable, you know, representable. You see what I'm saying? And that's just, this is what we got to be count, counting on because, <laughs> you know, when you out there finding these people that you're trying to deal with, and none of them seems to be righteous. None of them seems to be godly. None of them seems to be loyal or faithful. These are not the people that you want to start that procreating process with, regardless of how it goes. But the thing is, we generate millions of sperm out here daily. So even if we got rid of a million today, we will have a million tomorrow. Do you know how many women we could get pregnant with having a million sperm produced in a day? I'm going to say... At least once every time you have sex is a very strong possibility. And some some guys can do three, four, five. I haven't heard a lot, but whatever. I don't know. I, I don't know. I figure about after once or twice in, the, in one day, you're pretty much done. 
So I was going to say, you know, a man could have two kids every single day if he wanted to. He could, by next year, he could have 700 babies about to pop out if you was really on your task. But then you would say, now it's like, well, you know, that's not a good father because now he's done all this and he can't even be there for his kids. And then, uh, man, we ain't trying to be there for a child. We trying to be there for a generation, fool. What's wrong with you? One president can take care of the whole United States just by him being the fucking leader. But he can't do that if y'all don't realize he's the leader because y'all not going to be helping and supporting the leader. See, if we had people that was helping and support the leader, then we could get a lot of shit done. But y'all still hating on that fact. So ain't nothing going to get done. And whose fault is that going to be at the end of the day? When you get older, you got no family, you ain't got, you know what I'm saying? You got no, no dependents. Something that you could depend on too as well. You feel what I'm saying? Because we get old. And our children going to be walking around kicking young. We're going to be looking for them for an extra hand. Then what about our grandchildren? When we get even older. And, and, and then our children need help. Don't you want them to have help too? Them and you? By the grandkids? Keep that shit going, bro. But nah. Because y'all want to be challengeful and, and spiteful of, you know, who the order belongs to. We got to deal with places like hospice now see and i hope all you people who started this i hope y'all end up in hospice and then y'all 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 deal with what people do and get done to them in those places because they ain't with family i hope all of y'all reap what you sow right you need to get what you sow because this is what you're sowing in this is the mentality that you have and this is the way you decide to live by life right so this is what you're putting into life so i, I pray to god that life comes back and returns everything that y'all that y'all put in even the people who say you know y'all y'all have something against people who give to the homeless people or you really got something against giving to the homeless people because you know you want to you want to always assume that they're doing something wrong how are you going to always assume all right okay so what people do drugs all the time they still people right they still got to eat drink shit sleep they still got humanly things they got to do so you can't just assume that every single time they just trying to get a fix or something you understand what i'm saying Sometimes they need a bottle of water, bro. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got no money, but you got a bottle of water. It could be a half a bottle of water. You you still didn't. You, you might think in your head, like, oh, I would offer it to them, but they ain't going to want that. No, it's, you wouldn't want that. You don't know what they would want. Because if a person don't really got nothing right now, they'll probably take anything. So that half a bottle of water, if that's all you got, hey, make that an offer. If it's cold, you know what I'm saying? All you got to do is be like, look, man, this is all I got. If you want it, you can have it. You know what I'm saying? If I would have had a whole one, you know, I would say like eight times out of ten, they're going to take that joint and they're going to drink that joint right in your face, man. And that still be a blessing. So count your blessings. How much is you out here even doing for people? Or are you sitting here trying to hide and hold back uh, a perfectly utilizable information source to put together the right system for community? I don't know. But till next time, get at me. It's your boy, Dr. Illuminati. Peace. My love.